Greetings, everybody. Today I'm gonna do a short video on 10 CDs that belong in your hard rock slash hair metal uh, slash sleaze metal slash, you know, 80s rock collection. For those of you who still buy CDs and stuff like that, I still like to have the product in my hand. I still do MP3s and all that and whatever, Spotify, but there's nothing like reading the liner notes and seeing who produced your favorite album and looking at thank you lists. So I'm gonna go down and, and I picked 10 CDs. There's others, there's tons more, but I was just looking in my collection. And I thought these are some CDs that everybody should have uh, who's into hard rock from the 80s. I, one came out in the 90s, but it still sounds 80s, so I'm counting it. But um, let's start with, uh, and they're in no particular order. So let me start with uh, Skid Row, self-titled. Uh, came out in 1989, produced by Michael Wagner. Um, it, it, it really is a great hard rock record with a little bit of rawness to it. And um, it, it doesn't have that glammy sound that some of the bands did. There was a little bit of street sound in there. But uh, I'm going to go buy these quickly. But uh, Skid Row, self-titled, buy it. Next one. Uh, came out again in 1989, produced by the same producer who produced Guns N' Roses' Appetite for Destruction, Mr. Mike Klink. The album is The Sea Hags, self-titled album. Uh, and again, really gritty, awesome album. I uh, actually got to meet the lead singer one time um, when I was working in a record store. He was a really, really nice guy. And uh, great songs like Half the Way Valley, Back to the Grind, Misfortune. Pick it up if you can get it. Sea Hags. All right, next one, uh, 1985, Dawkin, Under Lock and Key. I could have picked really any of their albums uh, from the 80s because I love them all. But uh, wow, another one that was produced, recorded, and mixed by Michael Wagner and adding on uh, Neil Kernan. So I guess Michael Wagner was a pretty big producer in the 80s. He was, actually. I know that. Um, but yeah, songs like In My Dreams, The Hunter, uh, It's Not Love, great pick. Uh, 1985. Awesome, you gotta get it. Next one, I uh, didn't really like it when it first came out. I don't know why. I thought they were kind of like copying Guns N' Roses, but I found out some of the members were actually in Guns N' Roses at one time. L.A. Guns self-titled, 1988 Polygram Records. Um, and I'm not seeing who... Oh, produced by Jim Faraci. I've never heard of him, but this album uh, sonically sounds very almost demo-ish. It's very just raw. Songs like No Mercy, Sex Action, Electric Gypsy, Bitches Back, but it, it's a good album. It stands up pretty good. You know, it's almost got a punk rock quality in some spaces. LA Gun self-titled. All right, this is one of my favorite albums from the day. Kind of a sleaze metal band, or sleaze rock, I used to call it, because they were dudes who didn't wear makeup, didn't look like they washed their hair, drank all the time. Junkyard, self-titled. Um, wow, a lot of self-titleds, huh? Songs like Blues, the hit single uh, Hollywood. Songs like Shot in the Dark, produced by Tom Werman, who also produced Motley Crue and Cheap Trick and Ted Nugent at one point. But uh, 1989, another one from 89. God, a lot of good stuff came out in 89. Junkyard, self-titled. Sorry about the glare. Uh, some of these you're going to laugh at. You're going to be like, oh, they suck. But you know what? I don't care. I, when this came out, I liked it. 1988's. Warrant, Dirty, Rotten, Filthy, Stinkin' Rich. I always like to know who produced this. Produced by Bo Hill. And uh, he produced Winger and Rat, bands like that. Got He got a certain sound that when you heard, you kind of knew. It was like a big 80s production. Um, interesting thing about this album, the guitar players didn't actually play on the album. The producer didn't think they were good enough to play like, you know, what was going on at the time was kind of that shreddy solo stuff, or at least with a lot of people. And for some reason, the producer brought another guy in named Mike Slamer, I think his name was, produced all or recorded all the guitar solos on this album, and then went and taught the guitar solos to the guitarists in the band who could play. They just weren't really shredders and couldn't really rip like that. So he actually gave them guitar lessons before they went on tour to teach them the solos. So pretty good album, Janie Lane. Awesome vocalist, uh, Mist, of course, great songwriter. He's known for, like, Cherry Pie, but, man, did he write some good songs other than that. You know what I mean? That's kind of like the worst one, and yet that's the one he got known for. It kind of haunted him. All right, how about another one? This one's kind of a weird one. Um, I picked this one other than some of their other ones because this is where they got kind of glammy and, like, I don't know. It was just, I remember hearing it and thinking it was cool. Y&T Contagious. 
they started to sound like they wanted to sound like they started to sound like they wanted to be from LA at this point to me. It was like they're a Bay Area band, but uh, I like the album produced by Kevin Beanish, another guy who gets these really slick production sounds. Sometimes they're good, sometimes it's like a little too slick. Um, this has got some good songs on it. I like Temptation and that title track, Contagious. Um, and was this the last one to feature? Hold on a minute. Was this the last album to feature Joey Alves? I think it might have been. I think the next album, 10, he wasn't on it. You're, I'm right, he wasn't on that. I don't know what happened, but he left the band or got fired or something. Um, and also this album had Jimmy DeGrasso on drums replacing uh, their awesome drummer. What's his name now? I'm drawing a blank. Holy crap, dude. This is what happens when you get old, dude. Ugh. Anyway. White Lion Pride uh, produced another one, Michael Wagner. I didn't realize he produced so many albums. The great thing about this album, honestly, good songs, pop songs, really. I mean, not Don't Let It Fool You, not heavy metal. Pop songs. Um, oh, by the way, Leonard Hayes. It just dawned on me. Great drummer got replaced. Um, there's the ADD kicking in. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, White Lion Pride. Okay, so great pop songs. They weren't really hard rock to me. They were more like, honestly, pop hard rock a little bit. So I guess a little bit of hard rock, but uh, Vito Brada, whatever happened to him? You know, it's like he just kind of disappeared off the face of the earth, but he did some killer guitar solos. You may not like the band, uh, but if you want to hear some great finesse in guitar playing, woo, look no further. But anyway, I think these are good songs on this album anyway. Um, okay, so one that I just discovered like probably a year ago that I had never even heard of or heard back in the day is Canada's Harem Scarum, self-titled. Um, they're from Canada, and they write really good songs, very poppy, melodic, hard rock. I'm trying to think who I would compare them to. I, I really don't know. I mean, almost like Night Ranger maybe, but like just even a different sound. If you haven't heard Harem Scarum, check out their self-titled album. If you like really melodic, catchy pop hooks. All right. I've, again, I've left some out in this. For example, I, I can't find my copy of Pyromania. I think that's a great earlier one. So I picked another early one from 83. Uh, this album, I believe, was the first metal album. It's really not that metal, but to become number one on the pop charts uh, back in 83, bumping off like Michael Jackson and just all kinds of people that you'd be like, what? Can't go without Quiet Riot, Metal Health. Um, yeah, and at the time, this, I mean, some of it is metal, like the song Metal Health, but come on, feel the noise, let's face it, guys, that's a pop song. I mean, there's no getting around it. You can sit there and call it metal, but it's not. Um, some of the other songs on the album, it's just, it's very, like, pop music, but with a screaming vocalist who's, who kind of just, he, he really had a great range. If you don't believe me, try singing to, uh, come on, feel the noise and actually trying to pull it off. Y you won't do it. I mean, the guy was awesome. Kevin Dubro. Rest in peace. Carlos Cavazzo, really underrated guitarist. Um, I believe, now here's the thing, Rudy Sarzo is on the cover and all, or in the pictures, but Chuck Wright actually played the bass on this album, which I never knew. So uh, there's a quick 10 of, of albums you need in your 80s hard rock slash glam slash sleaze metal, hair metal, whatever you want to call it. I hate the term hair metal, by the way. It's just good hard rock. I mean, give me a break. All right, hope you all have an awesome Wednesday, and I'll see you next time with a classic traditional metal list you need of just bands like Judas Priest and Iron Maiden, albums you need by those bands. Until then, peace out.